Greetings, hacksters! Today in the office we have Ryan Cousins from Critical, uh, the creators of the Snickerdoodle. Uh, and what is the Snickerdoodle? Uh, it's a high level. It's a business card size brain for robots. Cool. So, yeah, there you see it right there. And we're giving away a bunch of these, or Xilinx is giving away a bunch of these for Freebie Friday. All you have to do is answer some questions on the website, which is right here events.haxer.io slash freebie dash friday that link is in the description of this video and you could win one so yeah tell us a little bit about the snickerdoodle uh so it's a project we started let's see a little four four and a half years ago um myself and a couple other engineers I used to work with uh at a previous company we're doing a bunch of embedded systems consulting kind of work and we found we were doing kind of solving the same problems over and over again. Right. Um, the biggest one being like a, a brain, sort of a reconfigurable brain, so kind of central processing unit that we could use across a number of different applications. Uh, the initial idea was primarily mechatronic type stuff, so cool. robotics, drones, you know, automation, that type of thing. Um, but we've got gotten actually a lot of interest, you know, in recent years uh, with like video processing and encoding and networking. So it's Kind of all over the map, but uh, right. But yeah, so we have this little little guy. It's a, kind of a modular so solution cool. <laughs> for. Uh, uh, it's intended to be a prototype to production platform, so you don't have to redesign all the hardware when you actually launch your product. Um, mm. So for kind of medium medium high volume uh, projects, it's a pretty good kind of drop in solution where it gives you like the Xilinx sync stuff, which we can talk about a bit. Yeah. Wireless connectivity, memory, all that kind of Wi Fi, Bluetooth. You yeah. got hundred and twenty five GPIOs on this thing? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we go on to here, we can find oh well, yeah, you've also got these baseboards that you can attach it to. Mm -hmm. Super cool and it comes with Wi Fi and Bluetooth, like I think we just said actually. Yeah. Cut that out. <laughs> um, and then you already have some projects that people have built with it, uh, which you can find on Hackster. There's like, you can run Petal Linux on it with this Pi Smasher baseboard that basically turns it into a, a Raspberry Pi analog. Yeah, it's sort of like a, well, a Pi Smasher, you know, <laughs> you know obviously, obviously play there. But yeah, in general, it's it, the nice thing is because all of these inputs and outputs are reconfigurable and uh, by the user or by the developer, um, it makes it easy to transition between applications. So if you need a bunch of say like GPIO for one thing, or you say you need like twenty spy ports for some other like sensor network thing that you're kind of doing, or you know all sorts of different projects, it's kind of it's reconfigurable on the fly. So with the baseboards, you know we have a simple anything from like a simple breakout baseboard where you just get all the pins and uh -huh. sort of maker friendly headers. Right. Or say like the Pi Smasher, uh, it's got like an HDMI input and output, uh, two dual gigabit Ethernet, wow. um, audio headset line in line out. So you can do like audio video processing network type stuff. Nice. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, in order to keep it small, you've got these very tight connectors on here, which you had to uh, workshop in order to make sure that you could actually physically attach and detach them, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the w there's kind of two different connector configurations on the board itself. One mm -hmm. is sort of the like this version, which is kind of like more of the standalone benchtop kind of hacker version. Mm -hmm. um, there's another version where the connectors are point down, so they mate with connectors that are look oh. like that on the baseboard, so you can kind of plug and play type deal. Right. So, and we wanted to try to kind of strike a balance between like some super dense FMC type connectors, which are basically impossible to do anything with if they're not plugged into something. Uh -huh. um, and something that's too mechanically big, like the point, you know, 10th inch headers um, that just take up kind of too much space. So this is sort of a good compromise. Totally. You were talking about um, how these pins are all reconfigurable and also some audio video processing applications. Those are both really cool things about FPGAs. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the FPGA that's on here, the Xilinx, uh, is it a Zinc 7? Yeah, yeah, so it's a Zinc, uh, yeah, part of the 7000 series. Cool. Um, so we use two different versions of that as well, but um, it's a 7010 and 7020. So it's sort of like the the lower end, like kind of lower middle end of, of that family of products. Uh -huh. um, so it's an actually an ARM, uh, an FPGA SOC. Huh. So it's got a ARM Cortex-A9, mm -hmm. a dual core processor on there. 
um, either 667 megahertz or 866, depending on which uh, Snickerdoodle One versus Snickerdoodle Black. Oh yeah. Um, and then different amounts of programmable logic. So it's basically an ARM processor wrapped in a bunch of programmable logic that allows you to, you know, run, let's say, like Linux and support your wireless and network stacks and all that kind of th stuff on the ARM, yeah. and then use the FPGA for all of your I/O and you know, accelerating algorithms and all sorts of different stuff like that. Super cool. I gotta pull some more of these up. You've got you got your audio processing tutorial from Adam Taylor. You got Python and Pink, which is like the Python Xilinx Zinc thing jig mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for putting those together. And then yeah, you've got all these sections on your website for like computer vision, audio and video, like we mentioned, the automation. You can look into all the sort of mechatronics applications for this, functional safety, power electronics, things like that. And even AI and machine learning. What are people doing with that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, uh, you know, Xilinx just recently released their uh, Vitus platform, so it's it's sort of um, the next generation of their development platform. So they've kind of gone through these different sequences of compartmentalizing the software and the hardware, and Vitus sort of brings all that stuff together cool. to make the whole kind of development workflow a lot simpler. Um, and they've actually built a lot of like pre-made IP blocks for accelerating different kind of like these all these like commonly used like AI machine learning um, algorithms to do thing a lot of things with like computer vision whether it's like a pattern recognition or mm. facial recognition um, either audio and video processing that kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, so it's it's kind of a it's it's again like a pretty big mishmash of of you know of applications and um, and processes that people are running on the thing. So it's it's kind of cool that we get exposed to a lot of pretty neat projects, you know, with this kind of platform. Yeah, you've got a whole section on your website for products that are made with this. And mm -hmm. right now you're looking for people uh, who have built applications with this. Uh, what kind of stuff are you looking for? Yeah, I mean, so we've, uh, there's kind of two two main platforms to use. One, the biggest one being Hackster for projects that people are developing with it. So you said like... Um, we have Whitney who's put together uh, like the Petal Linux stuff and yeah. getting that all to work. Pi Smasher, Adam Taylor, you know, and Xilinx have been working together with those guys. Um, so we're always looking for more community contributors there. Um, cool. You know, a lot of times we give away free hardware to people who are looking to just build cool projects. Um, we're uh, working with Crowd Supply as well to mm -hmm. um, we'll have an announcement pretty soon uh, about some, um, they call these field report kind of things where. They have uh, with their creators. They'll send blast email blasts out to people who back certain projects to say, right. "Hey, you've had this for a year or two now. What have you done with it?" Kind of thing. Yeah, cool. And speaking of crowd supply, actually, uh, the last time that we talked was uh, in 2018 when you were crowdfunding, uh, and you can now still get it on Crowd Supply. We'll put the link to that as usual in the description. Yeah, we, we're. Uh... Right now, we're selling through Crowd Supply still, so they're actually helping us uh, stock and sell some of the products. Um, also on Mauser, available for same day shipping kind of thing. Cool. Uh, and that can ship. Uh, both can ship internationally. Um, and you know, working on getting on uh, Amazon and potentially DigiKey in the first half of this year. So just trying to kind of spread the word a little bit and get it available as in as many outlets as possible. Cool, and you've got a beautiful sort of machined aluminum enclosure for it that you can also get on the crowd supply page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't bring one with you. It's actually a pretty slick uh, little, yeah, like you said, machined aluminum, hard anodized kind of thing. It's kind of fits, and it's blue. Fits really snugly. Yeah, it's blue. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, same corporate colors kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty handy for you know you just want to throw a snickerdoodle in your backpack or your pocket or something right. you don't have to worry about knocking off a bunch of capacitors or, or something. like bending the pins or whatever. Exactly. These yeah, are pretty yeah. well shielded, but like, yeah, you want to be careful. Yeah, you don't want to necessarily put it in like a box of nails and like shake it around, but you know, it's pretty <laughs> Oh, pretty that's going to be my project. <laughs> Come on. Uh, smashing my dreams here. Okay, so yeah, everyone, if you want to get your hands on a snickerdoodle, go to events.hacks.io slash freebie dash Friday. The link is in the description of this video. It's super easy. You just got to ask it, answer a couple questions and it could be yours. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Alex. Sweet.